Hi guys, Tim Man here. Just um, something a little different today. Having a break from the HHO setup, and I was just mucking around actually with the ignition circuit from the HHO motor that I made up. Um, just a 555 circuit, pretty simple one. The diagram is on our forum under circuits and diagrams um, heading pulse generators I've just got that running through two 3055's uh, you only need one these things don't even get remotely warm they remain cold this is just three different compa uh, capacitors on a rotary switch so I can adjust the frequency in big steps with that and then I can adjust it as well through this 10k pot um, within a range of 2 kilohertz. So I can go up to about 16 kilohertz on the pulses on this. So I just decided to hook this up. Um, as you can see, we're coming out of the high tension side of the coil or the high voltage side through the single wire. You would have seen this setup had two more caps on there before but I've removed them. Um, this was set up as my single wire charge system. We're down to one cap now. Um, this cap has got a diode going to the positive side in the correct direction. Another diode here on the negative side but this one goes through a 110 volt neon and then back onto the same wire. And as you would have seen in my other video, it was charging these caps up to around 140 volts, <coughs> as well as a battery and five 110 volt neons. <coughs> the caps, um, the caps are 470 UF 450 volt caps. Find them in um, power supplies for computers, TVs, all that sort of thing. So what I did, I've, I've come off the cap. I'm going into these two stainless rods which is submerged in a glass of water and there's been a few interesting developments with this so I've got um, two meters set up because I thought one must have been reading a bit faulty but apparently they both read exactly the same this meter here is hooked directly onto the negative and positive of the cap from the cap we're simply coming off into these two probes. This meter here is hooked directly onto the two probes to give us an accurate voltage read reading across the probes. So the first interesting thing was um, the power supply. When I hook this system up to the power supply, if you watch the voltage goes up one and a half volts for some reason so I'm not quite sure why because the voltage actually has to be adjusted by the voltage adjuster so that was one interesting thing um, that's the back EMF of our primary coil in the ignition coil and of course the secondary going through you can see the 110 volt LED is lighting up Turn that off for a minute, adjust the range on my meters so we get a fine reading on it. So that's the voltage across the cap and the cell now. It's um, draining down because it's in water. So once again, I'll hook the power supply up. Okay, we're ticking away now. The voltage in the cap and across the probes should be the same, and the meters say that they are. Now it settles at about 1.5, and that's about as high as the cap will pump up. If I take the leads off the probe, of course, the cap will go up to about 140 volts, but because we've got some sort of short across the water. Uh, that's about as high as it goes up. So 
Okay, 1.5 volts. Um, now I'm not sure if you can see the water's a bit murky now, it was clear, but I've been mucking around with it for a while. There's actually bubbles coming off of the rods. Not sure if you can see them. But they are there. So it is producing a very, very small amount of hydrogen and oxygen off each one of those. Um, and that's from one single wire. Here's the interesting bit. I'm just going to turn the light out so we can actually see this. Hope you can see it. Now glass is a pretty good insulator and I've never seen 1.5 volts do that. Straight off the side of the glass. I can get it to even walk above the water. Now above the water level, so that's actually travelling through the glass away from the water. So then I've got a neon, and uh, like I said, they're 110 volt neons, and that's just touching the glass. However, it gets even better. Um, here we have a CFL, gutted of course, uh, and I've only got one wire coming off this, as you can see. I'm going to stick that wire into the glass. Now, my hand is getting an electrical shock from the um, glass of the globe. It's travelling right round my hand. I can feel it quite clearly. And I'll just show you what happens when we lift the water with the wire out of the water. So, um, I'm not really sure where that high voltage is coming from. Both meters are clearly reading the same, very close to the same. Um, there's a reasonable size capacitor there. Maybe something for lid motor or K carrying one of those guys that are into the high voltage, low amperage systems. Um, maybe shed a little bit of light on that because I'm really not sure what's going on there. I also guess we could collect that back EMF and put it back into a battery that was running the system in the first place. Save a bit of power um, that's currently on 9.5 volts, 440 milliamps. I do not know why the voltage goes up when I plug the unit into the power supply because it really has to be turned up by this knob here. So, a lot of interesting effects happening with this setup. Um, 
um, and also keeping in mind that it's only done with one wire the cap has been charged off the same wire both negative and positive are hooked to the one wire it's obviously sending some sort of current into the water through those electrodes otherwise we wouldn't be making any HHO and also yeah what's with the high voltage in the water guys so I'll leave it with you cheers from the tin man